Welcome. Sir. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, on behalf of Satyam Jayatu, the Science and Ethics Foundation, uh, we would like to share exciting information on how respiratory and photosynthetic membrane protein complexes are merzoans that catalyze reactions by enhancing the interactions of diffusible species with substrates. So I would like to say that my poster is number 47. If you cannot get the time to ask me questions or if you miss this talk, please come to my uh, poster. So the queries that I address in this talk are uh, basically pertaining to three systems. But still, how can a given cytochrome P450 like C3A4 metabolize diverse drugs? Um, what is the main role of oxygen in life? Is it making water at cytochrome oxidase as currently people believe? And uh, how does or why does cyanide kill or incapacitate so quickly at such a small dosage? Then what is the role of diverse pigment molecules in chloroplast? So there are three systems. So I would say that I would argue that the concepts of murzine, murburn and murzone, these are significant in understanding these uh, questions and answering them. I use the word Murban concept in the 35th uh, MECC at Chicago five years back. Classical enzymes bind substrate at their active site where in which there could be a, a redox center as shown here and they could react that way. So the topological identification is very important. In the Murban mechanism that I proposed the substrate might interact at the surface through one active site but then this mechanism involves the obligatory involvement of diffusible species which could diffuse from the uh, active site and react at multiple places. So the substrate is rather not defined, the interactive region is not defined. So since this occurs in closed uh, environments within the uh, organelles, I call it Murburn. So this is also a mild unrestricted redox catalysis, so such a name Murcat. Therefore any enzyme that works by this methodology is called a Murzyme and the region around the enzyme where there is a finite possibility to find a diffusible species that's called Murzone. So let me give a disclaimer at the outset, we are not opposing the classical mechanisms on a blanket per se, but this is about how certain redox enzymes work, only certain class of redox enzymes. So to start off with, uh, let's see how the Murzyme CYP3A4, one of the most prolific enzyme known in the uh, liver metabolic system with the, which deals with drugs and xenobiotics. Here uh, we would like to emphasize our point with the molecule trabactidine. This is the reactive place. Uh, uh, you know moiety here, the end demethylation reaction. If you see the molecule is too large to access, this is the rough caricature of the enzyme. The heme is rather restricted, there are channels accessing it. So it's highly unlikely that such a large molecule can go in. We have shown through multitudes of evidence that this is most likely to bind outside and the diffusible species that emanates from the heme center is more likely to attack the substrate bound here. So what it does is basically enhance the probability of the reaction of the reactive oxygen species that emanates from the active site by presenting the substrate in a better way. So that's what is shown here. So this methodology of seeing things, you know, this view of seeing things allows the active site formation of multiple species, thereby explaining the catalytic activity in a better way. So the paper, the latest paper in this area is in uh, Frontiers in Pharmacology. If you see there are 50 uh, reasons quoted why this mechanism could be better. So uh, before we start off through the rest of that talk, I would like to request you to kindly open up to the concept that diffusible reactive oxygen species which are traditionally considered toxic metabolic waste are in fact the elixir of life. They are involved in multiple electron transfers and multiple uh, group transfers. Of course there, are, there is a problem with aesthetics because this would be chaotic, they, they would harm, that is what we would imagine. But I would say 
knife is present in the kitchen it can harm you only if you abuse it otherwise it's a very useful tool so with that i would like to present to you how involvement of these raw species explain certain redox enzyme mechanism better with respect to energetics kinetics and mechanistics and this far outweighs the aesthetics concern that one might have so classically when you talk about uh, heme enzymes uh, you uh, for example cytochrome p450 you have uh, the substrate binding then reductase pumping through uh, the interprotein complex and then uh, activation and then multiple sequential reaction and uh, deterministic stoichiometry is determined and then uh, you have multi molecular com complexes and ROS are considered waste here. So selectivity and specificity is shown so. Basically what we say is that there are quite a distinct number of interactive paradigms here wherein the, the enzyme can get activated in multiple ways and it can stabilize a ROS species at the heme center multiple species can be formed and then there are interactive equilibriums whether in the active site or in the milieu between molecules unbound ions and radicals so m u r this is what governs the outcome not topologically driven uh, fissures lock and key or coshlands induced fit this means that the bimolecular reactions and unordered schemes and uh, uh, you know this kind of scheme would give variable and non-integral stoichiometry because the single part involves multiple interactive equilibria. So the outcome of the reaction is more or less governed by multiple uh, uh, you know factors like delta G of formation, dynamic partitioning, dielectrics, concentration based effects, proton availability, spin locks etc. So let us get on with some examples from the respiratory system. Let's see here complex 1. So the complex 1 is currently seen as a proton pump as it takes electrons from NADH through the matrix word R when the electron flows through on the way to coenzyme Q protons are pumped here. This is a microsecond process. This is a millisecond process. Now the equation is given here. The equation, if you calculate the delta G, it's unfavorable. We have proposed very simple alternative explanation wherein the flavin activates and produces ROS here while it goes through this and there are channels and then there are multiple ADP binding sites on this arm. Quite like the cytochrome P450, ROS is presented in an effective way and ADP is attacked. So this is the ADP uh, and uh, phosphate you know combination way in which they give ATP so the reactions are highly facile so basically this is complex one is the ATPase it is a simple oxidative phosphorylation mechanism so here the ROS is what is uh, doing the reaction so what happens is the earlier hunt for uh, enzyme linked phosphorylating species you might not get it because this is not enzyme link it's a diffusible species reaction so similarly complex 3 is yet another morzyme Cur currently it is supposed to do the Q cycle within this region but then you see that these are all solvent accessible easily and this portion of the protein does not have any function as of now accord accorded to it we showed that these have four ADP binding sites so the ROS that comes from here, once again, it can easily attack ADP. This reaction is a tetramolecular sequential highly uh, fastidious scheme, which is once again not thermodynamically viable. The reactions we propose are very facile and bimolecular. So yet again, in the photosynthetic system, let me uh, give a couple of examples. I'll not go into the details here. This is the NADPH dehydrogenase. It looks quite like the complex one of respiratory system. It has only three FES centers. It has also a carotene here. Now, what do they do? It's supposed to do the uh, proton pumping. How? How? How can it take electron from where? So, you know, we say that it is a ROS generating and ROS stabilizing mechanism that works in this also. There are multiple chlorophyll here. 
our mechanism for the photosynthetic uh, process involves uh, once again ROS. Here we have shown multiple ADP binding sites on the uh, stromal side. So this is yet again a murzine. That's what we claim. So let's get on to the crux of the talk. How these kind of murzines can explain the uh, respiratory mechanism. The classic mechanism is that of proton pumps, the electron transport chain, complex 1, complex 3, complex 4. Oxygen is only involved with complex 4. It, it is present only to make water. There is no other role for oxygen. So the protons are pumped. But sadly, since mitochondria are uh, micro dimensioned, there is only finger countable protons. Whereas there are these proteins are in tens of thousands and even into lakhs. So we cannot explain how this can work. Then the next part is complex 5 is supposed to serve as the um, ATPs. But then complex 5 if you see has got at least 10 million times more affinity for ATP than it has got for ADP. So the equilibrium constant is 10 to the power minus 7 which means that the uh, steady state ATP that it can give will only be in picomolar to at the most sub tens of nanomolar. So the physiological ATP concentration is into about millimolar. So it we say that this cannot this scheme cannot explain it. So we propose a very simple scheme in which complex one through complex four are ROS utilizing, ROS utilizing or ROS generating, ROS stabilizing ADP binding enzymes. So what do they do? They generate ROS, they allow a facile attack on ADP and phosphate, thereby making ATP. Complex 5 serves as a proton chemostat. So as soon as ATP and water gets formed, it goes off. So the thermodynamic pull continues the reaction. That's what we say. So what's our, what's our evidence for these statements? This is the graph taken from Nichols who has authored the bioenergetics textbook in the field. You see very clearly when you observe ATP here, ATP synthesis here, ROS is present. ROS is formed. ROS is directly correlated to transmembrane potential. And then without ROS, there is no ATP formed. And we have shown that complex 1 to complex 4 generate ROS. It is also known in um, you know literature and it also binds ADP. And then um, very clearly, we showed also that if you take ADP and phosphate, just give superoxide, it gives ATP. And this reaction is inhibited by cyanide. And this was not only shown by me. In 1990, Kathleen Mailer, a pioneering scientist, she had shown this. And sim similarly, Galina Mironova, she had shown in 1970s that there is peroxidative uh, phosphorylation. So similarly, uh, this group had shown the same thing in chloroplast. So basically, DROS is directly linked to ATP synthesis and our bimolecular reaction scheme can easily explain why there is a high efficiency. Why does the cellular system go through this kind of a modality? Because this system is highly facile, very quick and this also explains why the search for the enzyme linked phosphorylation species uh, failed. You, if you are following the uh, literature on this subject, you can see the person, um, you know, uh, Paul Boyer proposed uh, phosphohistidine in science when the enzyme linked species was in vogue but that could not be isolated that's because the ROS is diffusible so the most strongest evidence for this and this uh, I think it is conclusive comes from cyanide uh, inhibition uh, of uh, aerobic respiration the classical view I, this work is in toxicology uh, if I don't get enough time, please see this paper. Cyanide is supposed to bind the ion center and thereby prevent access of oxygen. In the Murban physiological perspective, we say that of course it can not do that at the lethal concentrations because oxygen can easily bind. But then what happens is the superoxide and the ROS that is formed, that interact with cyanide in such a manner. So what it does is the ROS react and they get turned over to water and regenerating the cyanide. In this mechanism, cyanide is a catalytic uh, principle. So, if it were stoichiometric inhibitor, the amount of cytochrome oxidase or heme enzymes far exceed the amount of uh, uh, cyanide that is given which is toxic. So, 
So the lethal dosage cannot be explained. Another thing, the kinetics are not explicable because the Km is far lesser than Kd. When the theory says per the Michaelis treatment, Km is Kd plus something. So Km can only be greater than Kd. Very importantly, carbon monoxide which is present in smokers at 10% and which is not, you know, it, it doesn't even knock out it even 40%. It is at least 10 to the power 3 times stronger than cyanide. But then cyanide kills at 2% almost blood level. But then the amount of carbon monoxide required for that is approximately 80%. Another aspect is the binding rate. The K on for cyanide is 10 to the power 2 per molar per second. Whereas carbon monoxide binds much faster. This would give only a reaction that would need approximately hour uh, you know, in hours, you have to require that. But then these reactions are in uh, 10 to the power 10 per molar per second. So that's why you have very quick uh, inhibition. So this is one of the strongest evidence we have for our theories. Now, uh, this is yet another strong evidence. If you follow the literature on mitochondrial uh, complexes, this is the respirosome complex. Uh, you know, how complex 1 and complex 3 and complex 4, they come together. You see, you see here, they are present like this to enhance the Ross dynamics. So, because once they attack ADP, it can give rise to more radicals. So, they, when they are present like that, they can be harnessed effectively. That explains how cytochrome P450s clump, why there is small amount of reductase when compared to so many SIPs. So similarly, so what I'm saying here is murzines continue to evolve to minimize the murzone. That's why you have so many one electron agents when the conventional mechanism is two electron, our mechanism is one electron. So our uh, mechanism for powering of uh, cells is like a combustion chamber. We say that it is just like, uh, 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 you know, just like a combustion chamber where you burn at the phospholipid interface. That explains why phospholipids with lesser amount of, uh, you know, uh, derivations, moieties were chosen. So, uh, for evolution. So, now you can see the, the terms are very similar. So, we have a stochastic paradigm for uh, powering the cell. If you see very clearly, at the initial time, there need not be affinity driven enzymes. So, this is not a really affinity driven mechanism. It's a thermodynamic, very simple, kinetically driven exam, uh, um, mechanism. So, quickly I'll touch upon the mechanism of photosynthesis here. So, the conventional scheme is a Z scheme for electron transport chain and then once again like, for, uh, like mitochondrion, the ATP synthesis is dis disconnected. If you see the energy given by 4 photons of 680 nanometer, 4 photons of 700 nanometers, the input is only 1387. The, this reaction requires 4, 1463. Uh, thermodynamically, this doesn't add up. Whereas our mechanism, which involves photosystem 1, photosystem 2, light harvesting complexes, chlorophyll binding proteins, all of them are ROS generating and modulating systems. And that equation which we propose are correctly approximating the 4 OH bond brokerage uh, required for oxygen evolution. So this is thermodynamically viable. So, what is the evidence for that? Recently, we published two papers in which we showed that plastocyanin topography is not conserved. If you imagine it to be a, a very, you know, specific electron relay agent, you would not imagine that. And then plastocyanin, you can knock it out, still it grows, photosynthesizes. Plastocyanin is available in physiology only at 1 micromolar when its KD is 100 micromolar. Even otherwise, plastoquinone, which is supposed to relay electron from photosystem 2 here, to cytochrome B6 here, this is appressed grana where photosystem 2 are overwhelmingly present. You would expect plastoquinone to jump grana. That's not possible. So that's yet again a problem. So uh, plastoquinone, the predominant one is plastoquinone 9. If you want it to be faster, you want plastoquinone 6. In the Murburn mechanism, we do not want uh, the plastoquinone to be mobile. It is a packing mechanism. It is not a mobile uh, carrier in the Murban sequence. So coming to the final uh, couple of slides here, Murban concept, you can imagine that cell 
is like this. The cellular component or an enzyme milieu is like this. That is, you have pi and d electron uh, containing catalysts, you have unbound ions, and you have special molecules. They are in interactive equilibrium here. So oxygen goes to water, it gets reduced. There are electron exchanges, proton exchanges here. And when substrate goes in, say ADP, it becomes ATP with phosphate. If it is a chlorinating species like chloroperoxidase, it is getting chlorinated. If it is a hydroxylating reaction like it is in xenobiotic metabolism, it gets hydroxylated. So I wanted to give a very strong message to some of the postdocs and research students here. So at times you get because of this non-classical kinetics and unusual dose response. This is the final slide. Please see that when you do some assays and some reactions, you would plot Michaelis Menten plot. Sometimes you would not get it so beautifully in redox enzymes. You might get the plot going all over the place when you are supposed to get a beautiful asymptote, hyperbolic asymptote. Now this is because you are monitoring some some species which is in a highly uh, variable multiple equilibrium. That's why you are getting this. That's the maverick Morvan kinetics. What does it lead to in terms of physiology? It leads to very anomalous activations and inhibitions, idiosyncrasies and hormesis. Until now, there was no explanation for hormesis. Hormesis is when suppose you have a millimolar level of a drug, you don't have any effect, activation or inhibition. But then at a very small concentration, it might show a profound activity. That's because radicals might get stabilized at a lower concentration. So with that, it all started. I come to my final slide. Thank uh, gratitude slide. Uh, I owe all this work to Lowell Hager, who was a professor at Urbana Champaign, where I did my postdoc in the late 1990s. It all started one night when I was working in Urbana Champaign in Lowell's lab when I found that azide, which is supposed to be an inhibitor of heme, suddenly when you lower its concentration to uh, you know nanomolar levels, it just raised the activity. When I reported it to Lowell, he said it was an artifact. I said, no, this activity occurs outside the active site. So it took me eight years to convince him and he kind of agreed with my uh, um, you know um, proposals. So. I would like to say my uh, gratitude to this person who gave me a lot of freedom to work and treated me with all equality. So all this work I could do only because of this great man. I also thank Kainta Johnson Winters for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present my work and I also thank the organizers of MECC. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. These are my references. If you missed uh, anything in my talk, if I cannot address your questions, Please come to my poster. I'll be there for the one and a half hours. Full. Thank you so much. Please pardon me if I appeared neurotic. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel.